If you're looking for ways to lower your blood pressure without having to reach for medications, or even if you're on medications and need to find ways to help, then this is a video for you. Keep watching to find out simple, natural ways to get those numbers down. Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Richardson, a board certified family practice physician. I'd like to welcome you to Family Med, a channel that focuses on giving you practical and accurate medical information to help you and your family. If you think this would be something that's helpful to you, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification button, and follow along with us. So today, we're going to be going over some simple things that you can start doing right now to lower your blood pressure. But before we do, let's review briefly why you even care about it. So blood pressure is just the force that your blood exerts on your vessels. Blood pressure is a good thing because it's what keeps us alive. But when it gets too high though, it puts stress on the blood vessels, damaging the walls of the arteries. All this translates to putting you at risk for a heart attack or a stroke. In fact, high blood pressure is a leading cause of heart disease. Not only that, it also increases your risk for kidney disease, eye problems, forming aneurysms, and even memory loss and dementia. So overall, high blood pressure is a major cause of many of the significant health problems that we suffer from. So finding ways to be able to control this is so important in staying healthy and preventing these life-changing problems. Now we know that blood pressure is often treated with medication. Sometimes it's necessary and can be an important part of decreasing your risk of having problems. However, there is a lot that you can do on your own that could potentially help you treat it without medication. But even if you are taking medication, these suggestions can help still control your blood pressure and maybe minimize how much you need to take. So we're gonna go over some suggestions on some great ways that you can work on this. But I do wanna remind you, if you're currently treated for high blood pressure, don't stop your medications without talking to your doctor and review these suggestions with them to make sure that they apply to your situation. Okay, so here are the steps that you need to work on to help lower your blood pressure. The first one that I need you to focus on is losing weight. I know this is a broad suggestion, but just the act of losing weight will help you drop your blood pressure. Studies have shown that for every two pounds that you lose, you can see an average drop of one point in your blood pressure. Since the majority of us have 20 pounds or more that we could lose, that can be a significant improvement in your blood pressure. In addition to that, you should keep an eye on your waistline. Men with waist measurements over 40 inches and women with measurements over 35 inches are at risk for having high blood pressure. So look at your favorite diet and get working on losing weight. Now, if you're looking for ways and ideas on how you can help lose weight, then check out my playlist up here. The second thing that you need to be doing is get going on an exercise program. Exercise makes your heart stronger. It makes it more efficient pumping blood, which lowers the pressure in your arteries. I've, we've seen that doing 150 minutes a week of some sort of moderate intensity exercise can make a significant drop in your blood pressure. If you haven't been exercising at all though, make sure you check with your doctor first before starting a program. Then he's into it. Start with a walk if you haven't been doing anything and then increase the intensity over time. The third thing you need to do is cut back on the sodium in your diet. This can be a significant problem for most people's diet largely due to the high amounts of processed and prepared foods that we eat. High salt diets have been associated with high blood pressure as well as increased risk of heart attacks and strokes. Most guidelines recommend keeping your salt intake to around 2000 milligrams a day. Now the best way to do this is first avoid adding salt to your meals. But second and probably more impactful is staying away from processed or fast foods. Anything in a box or can or that's been prepared for you typically has more salt. The fourth is very broad, but probably the most important. That is, focus on eating a healthy diet. Eating a diet rich in whole grains, fruits and vegetables, and low fat dairy, as well as minimizing foods that are high in saturated fats and cholesterol can significantly lower your blood pressure. There are a lot of different diets out there, but focusing on staying away from the processed, high sugar foods will make a big difference. Specifically, adding foods that are higher in potassium, magnesium and calcium have been found to be part of a healthy diet and are felt to be able to assist in naturally lowering your blood pressure. It's always better to get your vitamins and minerals from the foods you eat, so focusing on ways to eat closer to a plant-based diet will do well in helping you in this goal. If you're looking for a specific diet to follow, one that we commonly recommend is called the DASH diet. The fifth step is to keep your alcohol intake to moderate amounts. Drinking more than one alcoholic drink in women and more than two a day in men has been found to increase your risk of having high blood pressure. We've also seen that if you're already on medications for high blood pressure, they're not going to work quite as well if you're drinking a lot. So keep your alcohol in moderation and you're going to do better. The sixth step is one that hopefully you're getting sick of hearing from your doctor and from everybody else in your life. 
It's the one thing that will make the biggest benefit to any health change that you can do. You need to quit smoking. Not only does smoking cigarettes contribute to hardening of the arteries, which will increase your blood pressure, the act of smoking a cigarette will increase your blood pressure and heart rate for up to 20 minutes. So quitting smoking will have a dramatic impact on your ability to control your blood pressure. So the next step is one that may not work for everybody, but for many it can make a difference. That's limiting your caffeine intake. We know that caffeine can work as a constrictor of the blood vessels. Consuming it right before taking your blood pressure can increase your readings. What is less clear is the long-term impact of drinking caffeine, but studies have been mixed on whether there's a long-term impact on your blood pressure. But the best advice here is to keep it in moderation and especially don't drink a lot of it right before taking your blood pressure or going to the doctor. Now, the eighth step is to work on finding better ways to decrease and manage stress in your life. Stress is a big contributor to increasing your blood pressure. When we're subjected to a lot of stress, our body responds by activating what we call a flight or fight response. Certain hormones are released that make our blood vessels constrict and our heart beat faster. This increases our blood pressure. As well, when you're stressed, you're more likely to eat things you shouldn't and sleep less than you should. Several studies have shown that by working on decreasing your stress, we can lower our blood pressure. Certainly, if there are ways that you can just decrease your stress overall, just do it. If work is killing you, start looking for something else that may bring much less stress in your life. Now, sometimes there's not a whole lot that you can do to get rid of this stress, but there are some healthy ways of coping with it. Doing things such as listening to soothing music, meditation, and yoga all have been very effective in helping lower blood pressure. Sometimes we just need to take the time to care for ourselves. Now, this is especially true when it comes to dealing with stress. Okay, so number nine, I don't think I'm gonna have a lot of arguments over, and this one may surprise you. I want you to start adding in a bit of dark chocolate or cocoa powder into your diet. It's been shown that a little dark chocolate or cocoa powder in the diet can help decrease your blood pressure. Chocolate contains compounds called flavonoids. Flavonoids are a plant compound that helps the blood vessels to dilate. One study showed that flavonoid-rich cocoa improved markers of health, including lowering blood pressure. Now, for the best effect, use what we call a non-alkalized cocoa powder, which has a higher content of flavonoids and no added sugars. So finally, number 10. And this one may need its own video, but briefly, there are some over-the-counter supplements that have been found to be helpful in lowering blood pressure. Some supplements that have shown evidence behind them are aged garlic extract, berberine, whey protein, fish oil, and hibiscus, to name a few. Now, I'm not going to go into all the specifics on these, and I don't routinely use them in my practice, but they may be worth looking into. Now, these aren't going to work quite as well as what you may get from your doctor, but especially in those who are borderline and trying to control things without medication, in conjunction with other things that we just discussed, can help you keep things under control. No matter where you are with your blood pressure, focusing on simple things like losing weight, exercise, cutting back on sodium, changing your diet, cutting back on alcohol, stopping smoking, keeping your caffeine intake down, finding better ways of managing stress, putting a little chocolate in the diet, and when appropriate, looking at supplements can do a lot to be able to control your blood pressure without having to depend on medications. So make sure that you're working closely with your doctor uh, through this on the most appropriate approach for you. Well, that's about all we have on ways to lower your blood pressure without medications. And I hope you found this to be helpful. So if you did, please take time to give this video a like and share it with your friends. It helps our channel to grow and reach other people that may need this in their life. And if you haven't done so yet, don't leave without subscribing and hitting that notification button so you don't miss out on any of our future content. But until next time, this is Family Med with Dr. Richardson. And remember, take care of your body because it's the only one you have.